All right, what is up? Shiz back, another day, another react. Uh, this week, pretty chock full of reacts, it turns out. Um, to, well, Monday night, but Tuesday when we reacted uh, was the uh, GTA 6 trailer. Um, I did not know there was going to be a day of the devs um, for the game awards. So here's this reaction. We are going to put it on two times speed because I am about, I think, two hours late. And this is two hours long. Um, so that is the benefit of me being late to it. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I don't really know what to expect. I don't remember much from the last day of the devs for, you know, in back in June or whatever. Um, excited to see a bunch of indie games. Hopefully some stuff that piques my interest. I, I kind of hit a lull this week. Um, went back on stream yesterday. Wasn't super excited to really play anything, honestly. Um, we do have the Pokemon DLC next week, though, so I'm at least looking forward to that. Um, let me just make sure. That, okay, the level's good for OBS, I think. Let me... I'm gonna bump it up a little bit more on OBS and then just lower it a little bit for me. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so I mean, I, I don't really know what to expect. Uh, I just hope there's, again, something that catches my eye. Um, I am a big indie game guy. You know, I, I love following devs on Twitter and stuff like that. Um, if anything, I would say out of the two of us, I'm definitely the one that uh, gravitates more towards indie game stuff, especially solo stuff. Um, but since this is music for Oxenfree, I can say, well, Oxenfree 2, I can say uh, I was not a huge fan of Oxenfree. I'm not going to lie to you. I don't know. Maybe I was just like in the wrong mood or something like that when it first, like when I played it, but just wasn't the biggest fan of Oxenfree. Um... But I think even when I've talked about that before, like, I had the same thing happen where I was just, like, in a horrible mood the first time I played Mass Effect, and it just put me off of even beating the game the first time. Um, I mean, the music here is phenomenal, though. I love this. Shout out Scientific. Um, but yeah, and then tomorrow we have, uh, there is a, uh, Pokemon trailer coming out tomorrow, 9 a.m. Eastern. Um, I might just, like react to that on the side because I don't think Jan will be freed up for that in the morning. I'll have to see. Um, if he is, though, we probably still wouldn't stream that. We'd probably just like react to it, upload it onto YouTube. But it is the Game Awards and Meow Scarado tomorrow, so I believe Jan's gonna pop in uh, at night for the night stream. Um, so we'll do that then. Am I crazy? Okay, yeah, the 20 seconds. Yeah. Alright. So we're gonna jump ahead. Since I've, I got all that talking out the way. But the music is great. The Day of the Devs Digital Showcase. Day of the Devs is a game festival focused on independent games, the devs who make them, and the people who play them. And we've been bringing them together for over 11 years, and it's only getting bigger and better, as evidenced by this amazing fucking air gold jacket. Why am I wearing this fancy jacket? Well, that's easy. That's because Day of the Devs has gone. Hollywood. That's right. We've got a brand new show to our lineup. A live show in Los Angeles. Coincides with Jeff Keighley's Game Awards celebration. It's in downtown LA, December 8th, from 2 to 8 p.m. We're going to have over 50 games. We're going to have music. We're going to have food. We're going to have drinks. And it's all free. It's all ages. Wow. It's if you're in uh, LA, go do that. But if you can't come, do not despair because we have a whole digital showcase right here for you to enjoy right now. So just sit back and relax. Open your entertainment holes and allow a tingling sensation to flow over your scalp and down your back. Oh, he said December 8th. So that's the day after the Game Awards. Wait, 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 wait. Before we get started, our pals at Capcom Interactive have given us a bunch of Steam codes and we've hidden them throughout the broadcast. So if you're eagle-eyed and you freeze frame at the right moment, you might find yourself getting a free game like Sifu or Cat Quest 1 and 2 or Chia or a bunch of other ones from Capcom. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm two hours late, so <laughs> I'm not going to get anything. From developer Tall Boys, Milk on the Air is a first-person runaway system. It puts you in the position of a wrongly accused civilian fleeing from a giant policeman. This is Milk and Air. Yo, Tall Boys here. Means I'm here to see the first-person Capcom Interactive. What the fuck? They weren't kidding, tall boy. You're unfortunately no one for President Don Penny's hot forces. Let alone the crimes. Must be a mistake. You get this one if you were arrested. Catch the train. Take a step and leave as fast as possible. But be wary. Every move you make is being followed by a giant policeman. Oh my god. Yeah, that is so creepy. That is so funny. I'll talk after you ease the tension between us. Give me a reason to be friends. Play visit, so give you smash their stuff. You can even defend the giant. Everything is on the table. It's a Tamagotchi system. 
classical like a dating sim, where instead of a romantic relationship, you can go to jail. Fuck off. From the start, there are many escape routes waiting to explore. Time is the key. Everyone from cars and trains to people and giants has their own life schedules. It's almost like, I don't know if anyone uh, who's watching this, if you're familiar with... Uh... I think it's called like Find Larry or something like that. It's like a Where's Waldo type game. And you keep finding this guy named Larry. Um, but then it breaks the fourth wall. Like, he's like, stop following me. Like, every time. And then, like, he just gets more agitated. So it's almost like you're Larry in this situation. <laughs> this is disturbing my sleep. You finished with our game on Steam and know more about it on our Twitter and YouTube. <laughs> interesting concept, very interesting concept. Nothing quite like a nice hot cup of tea. But you know what's even better? Serving up a warm mug to someone who needs it. Look forward to uncovering mysteries and defining your witching style in this world premiere. Hi, I'm Tanya, the captain of Kitbox Games. Hello, um, I'm Charlie, I'm a programmer on Loosely, because I deal with all things code. Today, I'm going to show you a little game we've been working on since Boyfriend Dungeon, called Loosely, a T-Witch simulator. You broke your Minecraft? What do you mean? <laughs> Loosely, okay. And this is from the people that made uh, Boyfriend Dungeon, I think they just said, right? So. With the most in-depth tea brewing simulation ever. You control temperature, the timing, the ingredients, and serving to try to make the best tea you can through your couple guests. And complete your tea master's journal. We care a lot about the simulation, how things feel, the moving... Too many farms together, running at once. Together. Oh, so like your game just completely crashed. Figuring out how to make the perfect brew will take careful experimentation and exploration as you unlock new ingredients, tools, and discovering recipes. <laughs> You'll need to learn patience too, because all good things take time. Yeah, you see, I, I can't see Jan playing a game like this. <laughs> like... I'm not super interested in playing this, um, but I think that is kind of the wonderful thing about indie games, right? Like you have like these kind of niche, either specific things to play or like the niche stories that they want to tell and stuff like that. And I think it's a lot of fun, you know, it's, it shows the, uh, the freedom that indie dev devs can have. I was able to fix it, but it took forever. I could move one block like every minute. Jesus. <laughs> This next game is from Studio in Yorkshire, England, called Cold Supper, published by our good pals at Panic. It's colourful cartoon comedy paper stuffed full of your favourite British regional accents, and it's playing itself the genre of slapdog. Its name is how I feel about the game itself, and soon you'll be explaining it too. This oh, so you played Starfield. How'd you like it? I thought it was okay. I wasn't, like, super blown away by it. Um, uh, yeah, I think, you know, when, when the, it first came out... Also, this looks... I, I love the art style of this. Um, but when the game first came out, there was, like, that article that said, like, oh, the game doesn't get good until, like, the 60-hour mark. And, like, Jan kept, like, you know, making fun of that. But honestly, I get it without... I didn't read the article. But, like, I get... At least in my interpretation of that, I get what they meant because... Uh, I didn't realize until later into the game that, like, you could get powers and stuff like that. And I'm sorry if that's a spoiler, but, like, I, I feel like... That's important to, you know, figure out, you know? Um, and, yeah, like, it is better to, like, kind of just get through the main sort of the story. I think if I got through a lot of it quicker, then I probably would have spent a little bit more time with the game after beating it um, than I ended up doing. Like, once I beat it, I was already, like, 45... 50 hours or something like that into it, and I was just like, I, I don't care anymore. Hi, I'm Zybo, and I'm Luigi, and we are Pop Gamers, along with Clark, making really good music. We made a game called Kind Words, both by children to the If you have Game Pass, then go ahead. Like, you're not going to lose anything from trying it. Um, if it's been a long time since you've played something like Fallout or something like that, or like you've never played a Fallout or a Skyrim, well, not Skyrim, sorry, you know, Elder, Elder Scrolls, um, I would say do it. Like, you know, it, it might not be the best introduction to a Bethesda game, but I think... If you're wanting to scratch that itch, definitely get it um, with Game Pass, <laughs> at least, um, if you have Game Pass. I ended up doing the thing, oh yeah, so then definitely do it, definitely download it, test it out.
making virtual places that match with all these desires to communicate. I think there were three Tuesdays this week. And people were drawn to find words because it offered something real. It was a space where people felt comfortable sharing some deep seated insecurity or something that was really bothering them. So much in our society pushes people to the boundaries. There are a lot of people feeling lonely right now. And just being able to. You have a great deal for me? Let me hear it. Random strangers on the internet. It's just enough to feel some amount of warmth. It's a social media, but it's not awful. There's no liking, there's no subscribing. Uh, you don't worry about quantitative feedback. You're not trying to be popular. We're making a game where you can come be yourself and talk about what you care about. Two kitties, please. Now I miss Lucy. I want Lucy to come downstairs. Give you my 3060 Ti, and in return, you get me a 470. Bro, I have a 3060. <laughs> I'm good, bro. <laughs> And it's funny because I didn't, I wouldn't have known if I was uh, messing around in voice mod. I'm sorry, not voice mod. Um, oh, flock. Okay. Um, I was messing with the Elgato uh, camera hub thing, and in order to get like the AI background AR thing, um, I needed to download the right drivers for my Nvidia. And I was looking it up like, what the hell? Like, I was like, do I even have? Like, I don't remember anything. Um, so yeah, did you buy a pre? Uh, oh, like a pre built? Yeah, yeah, I got it from. Oh my god, it's on the side. Isn't it on the side? Not too close or too far away. Well, some creatures. So whatever company starts with an R, I think it's like. Re. Redux, right? I think it's Redux. That's that's where I got my computer from. Like two years ago, I think, roughly. Whenever we started streaming heavy was when I had gotten the Redux. So shout out to the fake sponsor, Blistex. If it's winter time, you know you want that cocoa butter. Blistex, keep your lips not dry. <laughs> No, you're good. This isn't like this is a game that I've seen before. I'm not like super invested in getting. Which family? Yeah, We're also watching at two times the speed, so I mean, if there was something that I'm like super interested in, I was gonna stop and go back and rewatch. But so far, like, yeah, things look great. I love the styles. Um, but I'm not like you know. There's still nothing that's like ooh. Get that your friends. I'm gonna tell Jan to get that. Ooh. Was it Day of the Devs? Oink oink. I don't understand. Is this like an RPG? I didn't watch your reaction to GTA 6. What do you think? Personally, I thought it looked great. Rockstar always over delivers. Um, okay, they're talking. So, um, oh, it is turn based. Okay, this I'm super interested in. Uh, wait, I'm, I'm gonna watch this real quick and then I'll answer about GTA 6. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, me and Jan pretty much have the same reaction. Street Fighter. The player first has to decide which attack they will be most effective against the enemy. Like, can you punch a cockroach? No, you can't punch a cockroach. Well, you gotta stomp a cockroach. <laughs> then they'll use a key combo from their handbook to execute the attack before the turn finder runs out. We wanted to make a battle system that emphasizes player growth rather than experience points. But don't get too comfortable. Okay. You need to learn more complex attacks to do more damage as the game goes on. Talking with other characters is equally important. If you're socially adept, as we clearly are, you'll be able to avoid. <laughs> That's easier said than done. When you're a hermit talking to some random dude is about avoid cringe damage. Oh my god. Ro would do horrible at this game. And he, you know what, Ro does love mushrooms too. I end up watching the video or I'll leave it on. To have about. Oh. Uh, Very unexpected. Really crazy game, or is it a game? Judge for yourself. Yo, what's up, everybody? My name is Chris South Joe, and I'm a low level slime that works under the. Yeah, basically, we, um. And the creator of Dunkin' Cabbage. I, I really enjoyed it. Uh. One thing that I was 
I mean, obviously, you know, it's a cinematic trailer. It it's, wasn't, as far as I understand, it's, it's, there's no gameplay that we saw in that GTA trailer. But I'm not expecting that. Uh, oh, I've seen this guy's work before. What the fuck? He's a short visual novel set in the world of a monster collecting RPG. Wait, do I follow? I think I follow this person on Instagram. What the fuck? Um. But yeah, uh. It's. I am interested in seeing that transition from like what is a cinematic trailer into live gameplay. Um, like you know how you can tell when a game is doing that. Um, sometimes it's like very subtle and that's phenomenal, and sometimes it's like very obvious. Uh, but I yeah I agree though I I 100% have I have a thousand percent faith in uh, Rockstar so let them take all the time they need my head when it slammed on the concrete floor and i would stare at the ceiling imagining scenes i wanted to make for duncan cabbage while listening to the game soundtrack pipe out of my tiny tinny phone speakers i'm excited to be back in vice city though but yeah i mean if, yeah if you do want a more in-depth reaction uh it is on the youtube but i'm telling you not the graphics on level three super excited super excited for uh gta 6 of course I do wonder if we're gonna have to wait for online or if it'll get pushed back. I feel like it's a reasonable, definitely earlier than I expected. Yeah. I think when you take a step back and you're like, oh my god, it's been 10 years and at that point, 12 years since GTA 5, then you know, you kind of get stuck in that vacuum of like, wow, we're, we're not getting, uh, it's been so long, you know, like da 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 da. But they worked on other, like, they worked on Red Dead 2 in the middle of that, you know, like, that was a massive game for them to make, so. Um, now, the question is, when in 2025? It, I'm either thinking March or September. Worst case scenario is September. But I think best case scenario is March. Okay, a Metroidvania, is that what this is? Did they say Metroidvania and I missed it? <laughs> Welcome to the sarcophagus. Right, and they had said they weren't 100% on making another game in the series, which do we believe that? I don't know. Like another GTA game or another Red Dead game? Exploring and interacting with your surroundings. This is the trimmer program. Trying out the extractor's thruster mode to move around the rotten orchard. Indulging in gardening is integral when unearthing the secrets of the sarcophagus. You'll come across an abundance of seeds, and tending to the plant life will grant you new paths and means to unlock new skills. Nutritional values are accumulated by eating. What I do wonder is if, like, GTA Six online is going to be attached to GTA Five online. Like, obviously, it's separate. It's called GTA Online, but like, that was something me and Jan had a conversation about while we reacted, but. I think it would be super impressive if they expanded online to include both worlds. Yeah, they had said a couple years back they weren't sure about continuing the GTA series. Yeah, I mean, if this is the last one, though, you know, I wouldn't put it past them. Big ol' raid. Hey! XLunami 714X brought four friends. Hey, appreciate the raid. Okay. Hold on, let, well, what emotes we got? This appreciate you, Lunami. Appreciate you. I think online will be separate again. Probably. Yeah. That was, that's what Jam was thinking as well. But again, appreciate the raid and the follow. No, let me follow you back. I mean, X Lunami seven hundred fourteen X is now following. Is there a way for me to follow from here? <gasps> wow. Shout out OBS. There you go. Okay. Now I'm trapped. Oh, there we go. Hey, hello, hello. Hope the stream was well. Uh, right now, we are reacting to the game. The game. <laughs> the Day of the Devs uh, Game Awards show. At two times the speed, because I'm super late. Oh, you're playing Unite? Oh. <laughs> How are you liking the update? Oh. 
the second perspective change is much more affordable. You can well plug in the camera. Every single object on the screen is drawn in an acoustic angle. So our in house created rendering tech can provide the light, shadow, lighting spreads, and you know. I might do some Unite after this. I'm saving up for Miascarada. There you go. Oh, yeah, the, the gem sale is tonight. I mean, today, I mean, so I can finally buy the season pass or the battle pass, whatever. Um, I don't know, because some people were saying that it's... Yeah, from my understanding, though, the four pedals is, like, it's just a temporary license, right? So much more stuff to cover. Because so you gotta look at you gotta watch Yeah. Yeah, I think you gotta watch like four different streamers or something like that for the pedals, but it's still only like it's not like the full license. If I understood it correctly. This looks horrifying though, so I'm I'm looking forward to it. Play the demo on Steam. Right now? So far there's like Three games that I'm super interested in so far in this uh, um, in the showcase so far. Holston, uh, oh my god, I forgot the name of the RPG one with the uh, the mushroom pigs. But there's like a RPG that's kind of in Earthbound, um, Pokemon style. Also, Brawl City equals people I learned stuff about unite from that forget literally everything. <laughs> No, we, we teach, we only teach what not to do on Brawl City. Um, and then there was that other game right after the Holston, no, before Holston, a little bit before Holston, but after the uh, Mushroom game. It, it was like a Metroidvania with like some psychedelic coloring. I learned nothing from these guys. Yeah, you learn how to not waste money on 2K from Jan, uh, and then you learn how not to waste... <sighs> well, actually, I, I waste a lot of... Time and every time and money and everything. So I mean, you know, <laughs> you learn. Don't go to art school from me. That's what you learn, actually. Listen to Mew, not them. That's always the right way to go. You learn how to horribly die from Tony. Yeah. You also learn. Don't listen to Rogue. Period. Uh, worst mod ever. I've been buying 2K since 2012. You ain't learned that from me, though. Okay? You didn't learn that from me. <laughs> Hi, I'm Paul Hart. I'm a programmer, artist, and co-designer for Crypmaster, a word-based dungeon-crawling nostalgic puzzle RPG that we're working on with Akapara Games. And I'm Lee Williams, writer and co-designer of Crypmaster. As Paul said, Crypmaster is a WBBC NP RPG. Now that's a genre we've always wanted to explore, and something we felt we could only do within the indie space. I think this is... Oh, at you elves. In the indie space. So what does that even mean? I'll take it from here. And yet I fall for the BS every year. That's right, because Brass Cindy. Crypt Master is my game. Crypt Master is a game about the struggles of a dashing necromancer. Right, yeah, that, I was not expecting that. I don't know if this is a game that Palix was telling me about. No, I think Palix was telling me about a different game. With words. Yeah, let me get Jan on this. He's going to be screaming. You helped me to guess the names of items found Snime? throughout the underland. Next, he wrote, he wrote Snime. <laughs> Is Snime a word? You knew in life. Then you use these skills to defeat a range of vicious enemies. In addition, you need to solve a number of word-based riddles. And Not as far as I know. You'll also engage in conversation. Listen, this game looks great. I'm horrible at uh I'll be there along the way to keep the experience clean. Oh my god. Friendly. What is the name of that game with with the letters? <laughs> Why am I forgetting? I feel like Jan would get scared on Lethal Company. He absolutely would. I was telling Jan about a game that we're gonna play. Uh, Scrabble. That's not the game that we're gonna play. I'm sorry for screaming. I might have peaked the mic. But the, like, I'm horrible at playing Scrabble. So that's what this is. Okay. <laughs> um, also, every time I see this person, I keep thinking of Taika Waititi. I think it's the sweater though. Um, how could you forget my family game? <laughs> I played Scrabble like maybe twice when I was a kid and I hated it. Um, but yeah, I, I told Jan about a, a game that I had an idea for for uh, the year review stream that we have in two weeks. Um, where we, because uh, it's been a while since we've done any voice acting games, ever since we beat Dongan 3. So I told him about something and it has like, he didn't even look it up. He was just, but 
it has the word corpse in the title and he was like is this a horror game like he was already fucking terrified so frontal assault scramble what do you do you hit people my god that's violent and the history of British video games is probably no name that stands out more than Jeff Nick. He's been around forever, but he's worked on so many games. Jeff is just so well known for merging like challenging arcade shooter style gameplay with uh, just lots of farm animals. <laughs> Keep in space, attack of the mutant camels, <laughs> metagalactic llamas battle at the edge of time, and just it just gets weirder from there. I think you like software company. I've written a little present in the 20s. So, <laughs> so Wes, I don't know if you've uh, seen our past. IRL drunk streams, but uh, we no longer do drunk streams anymore. We just do drink streams. Uh, so the year review, we will be drinking, but we will not be getting up like we uh, used to because we're too old now. We're very old now, so um, our livers can't take it. Um, but there is going to be a portion where I I actually bought the steering wheel. Uh, I will be downloading a couple driving games, and I'm finally going to get my license at Jan's house. <laughs> my grandma punched my now stepbrother once. Imagine being older than me. I've been in here for the drunk streams. They are great. I'm the only grandpa allowed here. Oh, I thought it said drag horse. Drag her. Oh, this is... A fighting game? Wait, is that uh... <laughs> oh, I gotta show prop this game. Wait a minute, that's Okay, it is. Okay. Hold on. Let me I gotta message prop. Is this Okay, so it's a 2D fighter or is it a street brawler? I'm assuming it's just a 2D fighter. Okay. Play, Hold up. No, yeah, I definitely got a Mr. Pro. <laughs> I didn't even see that. <laughs> I didn't even see that. Though, I do have my glasses off, and I'm at two times the speed, so the fact that you're able to read words is super impressive. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> that is so funny. Now, 15 years later, this game is getting a lovingly crafted re-release, sporting 4K visuals, enhanced sound, and a huge extensive developer commentary. This is Braid, Caleb Hi, I'm Oh, Braid? Wait, isn't Jonathan... Wait, isn't he an... Isn't he an asshole? Hold on. we're showing Braid Anniversary Edition, which is a... If I remember correctly? This game is a platformer where you solve puzzles by running and jumping and stuff like that. And very early on, you find out that if you... Oh, yeah. Yeah. Jonathan Blow is absolutely an asshole. So we're just gonna... Like, I really enjoyed... Like, I enjoyed Braid when it first came out, but no. Like, he ended up being a complete asshole, so... That was in 2008. I think we've seen this before. See, this could be another game that me and Jan played because we. I think when we came back to streaming, the very first game that we played together was uh, Life is Strange True Colors. Uh, Jan really loves Life is Strange. Uh, it does look like Archer. Yeah, holy shit. Get ready for a heartfelt adventure like no other. As we navigate through a web of mysteries and emotions. Dodd. Hey, Mom. That doesn't say dad. It says Dodd. Only been live for 30 minutes and an hour into the video. Kind of sucks. <laughs> I'm just a pro reactor, okay? Life is Strange was good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Jan, like, really, really liked the first Life is Strange. He actually got me to play it. It's rare that Jan gets me to play a game. <laughs> 
Hi everyone, I'm Scott. And I'm Pete. And we are Fuzzy Ghost, a games-making duo living and working on Gadigal Band. Fuzzy Ghost. And we're here today to I love, game. honestly, more than seeing all the games that are, like, the indie devs are coming up with, I love, uh, finding out all the names that they decided to call their studio. Damn, that shit is loud. Holy fuck. No, ghost. Like, like, woo. We're make a horror game, and we just, we're like, what's the scariest thing in our lives? Renting. Renting, yeah. It is set in a house that we used to live in, actually. So it has a lot of the things that we dealt with. <laughs> so, black mold, uh, faulty ovens. Ceilings falling in, floorboards rotting. Mmm, big cracks, flooding, all that stuff. This is like so super. Will be able to match the twist because your oh, gives a pitch. interesting, okay. But we don't talk about that game, it gives us nightmares. Yeah. I'm here, but I'm doing some. Shop stuff. Hey, you're good. No worries. Again, I appreciate the uh, the raid. I appreciate you lurking. Oh, I thought they said jam. They did say jam. Learning about the house and what exactly Jack has planned for you. And while it's happening, also being terrorized by strange people around the house. Well, I'm like, I'm like, next housemates, a poker pin. There's a, there's a big theme of queer family. Yeah, we want to show that joy and that fun uh, that exists alongside the horrors. <laughs> so cute. The game's coming out, due to come out 2024. If you have a real mental horror story, please let us know. We're collecting more. Yes, absolutely. And please wish this on Steam and elsewhere. Um, and thank you, David Dennis, for having us. This is a real treat. Thanks, guys. Yeah, I can imagine, like. Hello. Uh, it's. It's kind of crazy putting this game and drag her and then in between both games uh, platforming Jonathan Blow. I think that's such an insane thing to do. Like, come on. Like, that's super disappointing, honestly. Like, like yeah, Braid is awesome. But... Like, some of these games, I'm convinced a 12-year-old man. Hey, super impressive. I, uh, and again, and I said this earlier, um, I think that's one of the wonderful things about, uh, indie games is that people have the freedom to kind of create whatever the hell they want in whatever style they want. That's how you end up with, like, a game where, like, I think an earlier game in the, in the presentation was, like, making tea. Like, obviously there was a little bit, a little bit more to it than just making tea, but, like, that was, like, a major crux of it <laughs> yeah i don't get the lore of indie games yeah it's just it depends you know like i think it gives i mean there there's a lower uh bar of entry in terms of price right like uh like hey this game is pretty cool it's like five bucks it's 10 bucks 20 bucks you know um it's usually something niche something quick um and it's an enjoyable experience or like you really enjoy the art style or the music or all of it you know um and yeah the uh the point of entry is not like a major investment like all these big budget games are where it's like 60 70 dollars like 2k like it's crazy that 2k costs 70 dollars <laughs> like when it's the same product every year and somehow worse every year right um I've uh I must pay for my sins. plus a twenty. Right. The not so distant future dreamed up by long way home sees humanity's government. Right, because then you also have to do microtransactions and stuff like that. The secure spot inside for their alien mother. How do they do this? By participating in the extremely dangerous megacorp sponsor death races, of course. This is resistor. Mm. Hello, I'm Gianni Matrigreno, voice actor of the TV show host in the upcoming game, Resistor. Resistor is a turbocharged, narrative-driven car PG, inspired by a combination of classic arcade racing and adventure. There's a TV show too? What the fuck? customizable character. Come in. And child of the legendary racer, Eugene Astor. But after an unfortunate accident on the track suddenly takes his life, you swear off racing forever. Soon after, you're exiled from the corporate city and left to survive the wastes along with your alien. Well, way to spoil that. Person. Why are we really doing this? I thought you hate the race. You'll have to break your one rule to try and save her. I just need to get her into the city to find out what's wrong before it's too late. And win yourself a way back in. Who is going to walk away with this year's city pass? It's me. No, this is definitely an interesting uh way to do driving. In this tournament, it's not just about who comes first. It's about who wins over the audience with style and character. Time your tricks to the beat of the music to earn bonus style points as the soundtrack adapts to the environment and your play style. You're not the only one fighting for the podium. Many others have their reasons to win or even just to stop you. You'll need loyal friends and an adaptable ride to outclass them on and off the track. 150, oh my god. Explore the waste I mean, at that point... To build your reputation in small and large communities. At that point, don't you just pirate it? <laughs> 
objective complete. That was so awesome! Did you know their dad is legendary racer Eugene Castor? Wow, really? Who's that? I don't know. This character looks familiar. Your actions but... might even start having a wider impact than first expected, with interesting consequences. It's your story to tell, and we look forward to seeing it. Couldn't find it. They only have 16 up. That's crazy. Wow. Twenty years later, they produced oodles of games, including my personal favorite, Snipper But the one fans can't oh, shit. is Detective Grimoire, a murder mystery themed point and click adventure series. The last entry to baffle sleuths everywhere okay. is 2019's Tangle Tower. And here to make its world premiere is its sequel. Hi, I'm Brian, <laughs> the director of SFP Games. I'm Very, uh. And I'm Catherine Langer, artist and long time SFP collaborator. You might have heard of our previous games, Snipper Clips, Tangle Tower, or the recently released demo for Pro Control, which is also part of the Data Destiny series. But today, we'd like to talk to you about a new game that we've been working on. It's a murder mystery detective adventure, and it's called The Mermaid's Tongue. <laughs> Okay, I might have to check out the original. Maybe not. Maybe this is my dream. It's not a dream. See, like, I love playing detective games with Jan, but one of my favorite parts is us voice acting. So as much as, like, I love voice acting, uh, I really wish, you know, there wasn't just so me and Jan could do it. Just me, it's not illegal to pirate it, it if it's against 2K or Nintendo. Yeah, no, exactly. The eccentric crew all suspect each other, but when Grimoire and Sally arrive on the scene, yeah, because I mean, released from like, the depths of the ocean. Matsuka had locked himself in the room. You know, it was later forced open, and the body was discovered. It is crazy that a Nintendo game like, uh, like Mario Odyssey is still sixty dollars. <laughs> like, I think it's down to fifty five or something like that. But then when you get further back to older stuff, it's like ridiculously expensive trying to get it second hand and stuff. And it, like, yeah. I mean, like, you know, if it if it just came out, you know, support Nintendo, obviously. Um, Thanks for watching this very first look and enjoy the rest of the show. I may have bought a mod chip for my Switch. That is definitely a game that I'm gonna get. On one hand, I'm thankful for how Pokemon helped me in recovering some medical stuff. Hi, I'm Evan Anthony, and I'm Jeremy Abel from Trail Cassette, a small studio in Brooklyn, and the makers of Genesis Noir. We're excited to finally reveal our next. They're in Brooklyn. I'm about to hit them up. Like, hey. Oh shit! This looks fucking sick. But like. Yeah, no, I mean, again, the big studio, the people deserve to get paid for their work, you know. But again, it, it's also understandable, like, it's, it goes back to what I was saying with, like, high bar of entry in terms of pricing. Um, video gaming is a very expensive hobby, and it's only going to keep getting more expensive, so, um, that sucks. Nintendo doesn't change game prices. Change free tournament entry to $70. Sheesh. Seventy dollars just to lose. Not saying that. I'm not. I'm not saying you're losing. I'm just saying. What good Pokemon games are on Nintendo? Like on the Switch? So, um, I was actually gonna say this when you were saying you modded. I mean, you got a mod chip for your Switch. Um, the uh, Pokemon Brilliant Diamond Shiny Pearl has been like everyone like hates it, right? Everyone just fucking hates it. But there's. Uh, a community mod called uh, oh my god I think it's just called Luminescence um, and it's kind of like them making the game like uh, Pokemon Platinum um, but then there's someone who's working on that who's a part of that dev team that's added all the national Pokedex like I've been following this person they added like all the Pokemon they currently just finally figured out how to add Mega Evolution into BDSP and all this stuff. So I'm waiting for them to like completely finish that before I do stuff with my Switch. Um, but uh, yeah, and before I buy that, because that's a game where it's like it wasn't that great, uh, like based off reviews and stuff like that. Like people hate that game. Um, yeah, PLA is awesome. PLA is definitely awesome. That's what really got me back into playing Pokemon. Bits and bombs. Nope. Yeah, if I were you, I'd send your Switch in to get modded rather than doing it yourself. We had trouble doing mine. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna wait anyways until like... Like one, when it's done, and two... Um, when the new uh, Nintendo console comes out. Because I don't want to like fuck up my shit now. Slime guy. Ah, uh, okay. I mean, I might also find out a way, like, how to do it on PC. 
Last time I saw you, that looks awesome. God, this is insane with uh, the two times speed. I think I got to switch a year after. Ultros was the other game I was talking about. Jesus Christ. Plus, we'll have some wacky alt control games made possible by our friends from Wii Pro Switches and Glove. Don't forget to RSVP for the in-person celebration in Los Angeles. It's totally free. You got your Switch like the first year it came out. You can mod it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I got it the year after. I gotta check Steam, because there was one of those games had a... Had a demo. We can't forget our musical buddy, Dose One. You've been hearing his beats all throughout the broadcast. He's been with us providing music ever since we started doing these digital shows. And scientific for that excellent free show. Check out yeah, the scientific the music was awesome. David Dose will be back in 2024 with lots more surprises. Stay tuned for wholesome snacks featuring lots of cozy indies immediately following Day of the Dead. Thank you to all the developers who brought the share of their game. Day's gone. I hope you don't think that we changed now that we've gone Hollywood. I still don't have an agent and I never can, but we are still Day of the Dead. Wait, there's one more surprise from our friends of Hollywood. Oh my god. And you are not expecting this. Check it out. Is this a dungeon crawler? What the fuck? Okay. You know, um, you know that uh, that art style did not make me think that that's what that game was gonna look like. Uh, so that uh, that was an interesting choice. Um, all right, so I think we're gonna we're gonna mute up here, play some music. Um, yeah, I, I know they're gonna show a little bit more stuff off here. But I think that's it for the React. Um, hold on, let me, because I already forgot a couple names. But I think there was maybe like four or five games that definitely caught my interest um, in that. Um, anything detective related, I'm like, ooh, I'm super interested in that. Um, always looking for more stuff for me and Jan to either do a playthrough of or uh, do voice acting on. Um, obviously, you know, we're not just trying to voice act on any game. You know, just something that we're super interested in uh if you haven't seen us play dong and rampa uh we have all three games uploaded on the youtube channel on broad city i mean if you're watching this on youtube then there you go um well this looks hold up hold up this looks fucking incredible what the fuck i love this style right now holy shit all right hold on we're, we're about to the variant? Okay. Next up is a multiplayer city builder where you'll work together with other players to create a beautiful world. Stay tuned for information on how you can start playing today. I guess we're okay. I guess we're watching all of this. Based on kindness and teamwork. Hey, be nice. Together and watch it grow as you help each other build. Unlock new tiles. The variant. Okay, I thought they were just going to show off some of the stuff that we uh Pongnite is still seen. Meta, with a lot more on the way. Oh. Oh, I'm so stupid. Is Day of the Devs and it's wholesome. The first ever demo for Flock is available now on Steam as a part of the Game Awards celebration. But I think there is some overlap in some of the stuff that Wholesome is showing off. You can download the exclusive demo by visiting wholesomegames.com. My God. Pinehearts is a cozy narrative adventure by new publishing label Little Nook. Now we're getting both reacts. Explore the sleepy scenery of Pine Hearts Caravan Park in a gentle story about fond memories and growing up, uncovering secrets, and new paths in a wholesome land of puzzles and adventure. Our next game is an open world farming adventure on a planet at the far edge of the galaxy. Stay tuned to the end for an exclusive reveal. I ran across a title you might 
look at and like Sable. I think I played the Sable demo. Hold on. I think I played a demo of Sable. I'll look it up. Sable game. I did play Sable. <laughs> yeah, I remember playing that demo. Damn, that was in 2021? Holy shit. Oh my god. Ooh, a humble bundle. Alright. Venba. Is that butter? <laughs> Mail time. That's, I, I will say that's the one thing about, like, um, the way that indie games kind of advertise their stuff of, like, how disconnected their trailers are from, like, their actual gameplay. Um, everyone kind of does the same art style. It's almost like they're hiring the same person to do the trailer. Um, and then it has, like, it looks nothing like the game at all. Like, okay, right, this one was a 2D trailer, right? Like a, you know, intro. But I can at least say stylistically, in 3D, it looks like the same thing. Whereas there's other ones where it's just a completely different, like, uh, art style. She just told me he's been enjoying those porn games on stage. Hey. Hey, that's on the, uh, the Only Janus channel. This next game was featured in the first ever Wholesome Games event way back in 2020. But as you can imagine, we're a little emotional to premiere this very special trailer and release announcement. Um, okay. Lift a curse and revitalize a ruined island in Snack. <laughs> where former big city kitties Momo and Mikan are starting a new life. Yeah, that's the after midnight stream. Grow crops, raise fluffy cows, go fishing, explore, <laughs> customize and decorate as you please, and much, much more in this farming cat venture. Okay, hold on, I'm finding the wrong list. Earlier this year, we announced our first ever Wholesome Games Presents title, Yusagi Shima. Today, we're happy to show you a look at some brand new content coming to the game today. Yusagi Shima is a bunny collecting game. Players decorate an abandoned island in order to discover and make friends with a variety of cute, curious bunnies. You can hop over to Google Play and the App Store to download Yusagi Shima for free. But before you do, let's take a quick look at the latest update out today. Expand your island's features and discover a variety of new aquatic toys for your bunny friends to play with in the Yusagi Shima Beach Update. 18 plus or 21 plus stream based on jurisdiction. There's new ocean decorations. No, you gotta be, uh, 30 and up. <laughs> That's why it's only me and Jan in the stream. Okay, sorry. I, I think I finally found a good article. My friends go to the game page to read the reviews. That stream, yeah. Be the heroes in a co-op adventure. Oh, that's all you had to say. Co-op? Yeah. I get a special pass to join the stream, though. Yeah, because you you were like uh. You got that first founder uh thing on. That's why. Can I be a horse? There you go. Now's your chance. Yes. Okay. Eastward. That's what I was thinking earlier. Where the hell's the Eastward DLC? Fuck yeah. I fucking love the Eastward. And I love that song, Iron Carbine. They seem older though, right? Am I, am I tripping? January 31st, that doesn't even sound like a real date. Oh shit. Described as an experiential interactive meditation, our next game aims to be replayed time and time again like a favorite song. Interactive meditation? <laughs> A 
Or I would love to find an article that's just a list. <laughs> this looks like a mix of Animal Crossing Valheim. If Valheim was 2D and didn't have enemies to stab. Oh, you're talking about uh, Eastward? No, that that DLC is just. I think they're they're kind of adding more like um, Stardew Valley type stuff. But no, Eastward is very. <laughs> nah. I'm thinking about getting the OLED Steam Deck. I mean, yeah, people people have spoke highly about the the Steam Deck. Um, so I think definitely. God, this looks great too. Um, if if you play a lot of stuff on PC, like on Steam, then definitely do it. Definitely invest in it. Um, I just I don't really. Uh, so. Like if I'm playing something on PC, it's for the sake of streaming. So can't really stream on Steam. Oh yeah, they do have emulators too. Yeah. You can also watch my gameplay of Eastward on the YouTube. Wow, there's so much stuff on YouTube. We have like way too many videos on YouTube. People use the Steam Deck as a PC. That's crazy. Days of Feast. Next, we have a virtual pet game where you can raise and release a variety of bugs. You'll play as a research scientist helping a forest recover after a devastating fire. Take a look at this exclusive trailer to find out where you can catch these cool critters. I keep staring at the Among Us thing, the thing uh, poster in the background. I think Ro would like this game. to Nintendo Switch. Is it Bug Abu or Bug Obu? I'm assuming A. Stay tuned to the end of the trailer for some exclusive info on the game's full release. As I'm writing this, most of the human race are still asleep on the island. In a few years' time, you're going to join them. So that when you wake up, you wake up somewhere better. I don't know exactly what the world will look like. All I know is that people in the whole world made the mistake of not picking past tomorrow. Skies. Everything a child deserves. By sending you ahead, I'm staking my heart on the future. The truth. The truth is an ugly mistress. But I ain't no ugly duckling. This charming detective mystery calls for a Okay. <laughs> a cozy take on Return of the Overdin style gameplay. Hey, hey, hey. Figure out people's secrets. Is coming in 2024. Bro, but we just had Frog Detective. Many of the games you'll see today are featured on Steam as part of the Game Awards celebration. Don't forget to show your support and give your favorite game a wish list. Head over to Steam or to wholesomegames.com to see them all, including our next game with a demo you can download today. I, I don't think that one's a demo that I'm gonna get. Probably look for. Okay. I'm trying to look for demos on whatever demo they were talking about. Oh my god. Duck Professor Lane, yeah. Sorry, I'm I'm like I said, I'm looking for whatever demo that was earlier that they said in uh in the day of the devs. And I looked at new releases on Steam and one of the games I see is Horny Holiday. Now I know what now I know what Wes is talking about. Oh this is no joke. Oh my god. Okay, yeah, we <laughs> we can't we can't show that game. Holy shit. Let's get back to the wholesome games, okay? No horny holiday. What the fuck? It's on sale 10%. <laughs> the game just came out. Did one just pop up? Not not on not on this. That that would not be wholesome, but there is one on the on the Steam store. New releases. Momento. Here's an exclusive first look at some new content coming to a wholesome game's favorite. I'm gonna cry, this is adorable. Oh, these are reviews. I thought these were characters in the game talking. <laughs> Sticky businesses plan 
Fifty DLC is all about the office, bullet journals, calendars, and basically everything involving daily business. They are everywhere. When one comes out, it's always on. New and trending. Additional stories tied to the office theme. I'm gonna click it. I hope it doesn't like give me a tag. We'd like to thank these developers and publishers for helping to make today's show possible. Thank you. It's a little nook and prideful slot for your support. Oh my God! I can hear it playing. Holy shit! <laughs> is she rapping? Or like telling a poem? Courtesy of our friends at I am Don't forget this. Don't forget that. Can I bring this purity with me wherever I go? You step into the shoes of Tyna as she prepares to move out of her childhood home and begin the next chapter of her life. From the of her memories and learning to the creative, expressive person she is. That wig on her head looks horrible. I'm talking about Horny Holiday, by the way. No anxiety, just vibes. Just vibes. In case you missed it earlier, here's another reminder about our first ever Folsom Games bundle. Here's a closer look at all of the games included, and if you want to grab this bundle, just visit FolsomGames.com. Wait, what the fuck? All right, hold on. Yeah, all right, hold on. Let's. I'm pretty sure this is the scissor reel. Tinykin looks cool. I don't think I'll get it though. Venba looks great. Wait, didn't they show this off earlier? Only honey holidays. That's right. Yeah, they definitely showed this earlier. Hold up. Did I go backwards? Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. They're they're talking about the the, world the bundle. My bad. About spending time together with friends. Enjoy. Nero, our home, a place of endless beauty and wonder. Now is our protection. Awaken the spirit of your island. Grow together and restore the balance of our world. Discover new horizons. Is this Koa? And harness the world around you. Grow your island. It's your home. Nira is calm, and your voyage has just begun. Wow. The voyage. And that brings us to the end of our program. Thanks to everyone who contributed right. to today's showcase, to Jeff Keeley and the Game Awards for hosting us, and to our friends at Day of the Devs for sharing this. And fuck for Jeff Keeley. I'm kidding. Every game in today's show. We'll see I'm you again kidding. Direct 2024. But for now, goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. All right, we're gonna hit. We're gonna hit the loop on it, just in case. Um, okay, I didn't want to pause that. Um, but that is the react for Day of the Devs and Wholesome Snacks. Did it pause? Oh no, it's just, that's, that's the screen they're ending on? Okay. Um, uh, yeah, there's quite a few games in there. I think I had, well, no, the, the thing that made me tune into the Wholesome Snack games was whatever that game was at the beginning with the, uh, that almost looked like Studio Ghibli-esque. Um, trying to look at a list right now of the games that were announced for Day of the Dev. Um, I mean, that first game, Millis Sonier, uh, with a giant police officer, that was kind of crazy, but I don't know if that's something I would invest in, like, get into. Nirvana Noir at the end, that looked awesome. Um, Thank Goodness You're Here was pretty interesting. That was the uh, the art style one from way earlier. Um, the art style one from way earlier. What a way to describe a game. When uh, we were talking about Grand Theft Auto 6. Um, what else? Kind words, low... Two lo-fi city pop. I mean, that that looked nice. But Hermit and Pig. That's that RPG game from earlier that I was definitely interested in. Let's see if we could uh, scrub through. Well, yeah. There's the prisoner cop thing. Damn, that was early. Holy shit. Okay, yeah. This is the the art style game that I was talking about. Um, where I was totally into that. All right, let's mosey on past flock. This one. Yeah. Hermit and Pig. Um, I was definitely interested in this. Especially as someone who really liked Eastward. Not saying that they didn't make Eastward, but you know. That's just what I'm in. I'm like, I'm just... I really like uh, 2D RPGs. Let's see. Holston. Oh, actually, no. Hold on. This, this one, I, I forget what this one's called. But... Dome King Cabbage. So, I mean, this is just, like, a lot of uh, different art styles going on. I'm pretty sure I follow this person, because uh, I've seen the, like, that night, that 3D night at the intro. Like, I've seen this character before. I've seen this whole exact screen before. So, I, I'm i pretty sure it's someone I follow. I, I think they're Colby? I think Colby's their name or something like that. Um, and then right after this is Ultros. Which is like what? It's like a Metroidvania, yeah. Um, 
this just looks insane. I, I love the psychedelic, psychedelic coloring and everything like that. Um, I unfortunately haven't played Blasphemous 2 yet. Not saying that this is from the same people, it's just the last Metroidvania I played, I think, was Blasphemous. So, unless Metroid Dread, obviously, was in between. I, I forget the order, but I really wish I uh, did play Blasphemous 2, but it is what it is. Um, and then what else after that? Oh yeah, Holston. Holston looks creepy as, as F. Um, that classic, classic, classic Resident Evil style. Um, you know, well, you know, obviously you had a fixed camera back then, but still, you know. What else? Drag her was definitely a surprise. Um, but Open Roads, yeah, no. Fuck you, Braid. Um, open Roads looks great. That could be like a little uh, Life is Strange light for Jan. Um, what else? Mermaid's Tongue. Yeah. So I didn't even know this was a, a game before this, so I gotta look into the part one of this. Definitely get that going. Um, and then depending on how I feel about that game, definitely gonna get this one. Um, and then, yeah, and then I think it right after that is Nirvana Noir, so... Which looks insane. This looks absolutely insane. Looks great. Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not gonna look up an, another list for Wholesome Games. I think that was... Wholesome Games was pretty quick. It's usually pretty short anyway. Um, but it was Wholesome Snacks. So, that was a quick react... Uh, like, a, a quick presentation from them. Um, I know we did watch it in two times speed, so... I apologize. Uh, <laughs> but it is a two-hour presentation. I could not sit here for two hours um, a lot to look forward to I hope I actually get these because I do tend to like hey I really like this and then I forget about it um, which I think maybe that's either something I could do better on my end of like keeping track of these I do follow a lot of devs on Twitter like a lot of indie devs on Twitter so I mean it's <laughs> you know it's kind of hard to uh, follow everybody and then I don't even follow that many people but whatever I'm getting angsty too to be honest oh antsy yeah. Um, but yeah. If you're watching this on YouTube, I'm, I'm gonna figure out what I'm doing on stream in a second. But uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, thanks for watching my react. Uh, I'm probably gonna post this immediately today. Um, but we have tomorrow is the Game Awards, and then there's also the Pokemon trailer in the morning, which again I'll probably just film a reaction to, record a reaction to, not uh, stream that. Um, I don't know if me and Jan are gonna react to the Game Awards or play Unite and then just have like the Game Awards on the side or something like that and we'll see. Um, yeah. If you are watching this on YouTube again, thanks for watching. Uh, come over to twitch.tv slash Cindy. And until the next video, peace.